Hi guys, this is IGCSC O Level Chemistry, Paper 22, June 2019, Question 1. The apparatus shown is set up. After 20 minutes, a white ring of ammonium chloride is seen at position Y. Which statement about the molecules of ammonia and hydrogen chloride is correct? So we've got one end with cotton wool soaked in concentrated ammonium, ammonia solution and the other with a cotton wool soaked in concentrated hydrochloric acid and the white ring at position Y is closer to HCN than it is to ammonia. So which statement is correct? The first statement says molecules in ammonia have a larger MR than molecules of hydrogen chloride and so they move more slowly. So the MR for ammonia would be 14 plus 3, 17 and for HCl would be 1 plus 35.5, 36.5. So the molecules in ammonia have a larger MR? No, they have a smaller MR. Next, molecules in ammonia have a larger MR. So this is incorrect again. Next, molecules in ammonia have a smaller MR. Yes. Then molecules of hydrogen chloride. And so they move more slowly. No, if they have a smaller MR, they would move more quickly. So molecules in ammonia have a smaller MR than HCl and so they will move more quickly. Yes, and that is the reason why the white ring is closer to HCl than it is to uh, ammonia. So this makes option D the correct option for this question. Question two, a student measures 25.00 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid accurately. Which apparatus is most suitable? So. The apparatus that is most suitable for measuring volumes accurately to two decimal places would be a burette. So the options are a beaker. A beaker is not used to measure accurate volumes. Measuring cylinder is again not used to measure accurate volumes, only approximate volumes. A burette is a piece of apparatus that is used to measure variable volumes but accurately. And a dropping pipette is not used to measure volumes at all. It is just used to measure drops that will be added to the container. So the correct option for this question is option C. Question three, the chromatogram of solutions of two metal ions P and Q is shown. So Q travels a lesser distance than P. P is colored, a locating agent is used to find the position of Q. The RF value of each solution is calculated. P is a dash element and this says P is color, so it should be a transition element and has an RF value 2 than that of Q. It has an RF value that is larger than that of Q or greater than that of Q. So P should be a transition element that has an RF value greater than that of Q. So which words complete gaps one and two? One should be a transition element, eliminating options A and B, and two should be greater, eliminating option D, and making option C the correct option for this question. Question four, what is an isotope of E? So an isotope is an atom of the same element having the same number of electrons and protons, but different number of neutrons. So the isotope will have the value of proton number as 15 only and the mass number value would change. So it would not be 31, it would be greater than 31 or lesser than 31. So uh, A has a proton number of 14, C and D has a proton number of 16, so all of them get eliminated. So the only remaining option B has a proton number of 15 but a uh, nucleon number of 33. So this is definitely an isotope of E1531, making option B the correct option for this question. Question five, which row describes the formation of single covalent bonds in methane? So the options are atoms share a pair of electrons. Yes atoms will share a pair of electrons and both atoms gain a noble gas electronic configuration 
Yes, that is the reason why covalent bonds form. So both the atoms involved in sharing of electrons gain a noble gas configuration. Next, atoms share a pair of electrons. Yes, both atoms have the same number of electrons in their outer shell. Uh, both atoms have the same number of electrons in their outer shell. Technically, they do, but this is not why a bond forms, a covalent bond forms. A covalent bond forms so that the outermost electronic configuration becomes isoelectronic, which means same as that of a noble gas. So the way this statement is written is not that correct. Next, electrons are transferred from one atom to another. This is not an ionic compound. And both atoms gain a noble gas configuration. This part is correct. Electrons are transferred. No. Both atoms have the same number of electrons. No. So the correct option for this question is option A. Question six, which statement describes the structure of an ionic compound? It is a giant lattice of oppositely charged ions. Yes, that's what an ionic compound is. It is a giant lattice of positive ions in a sea of electrons. No, they've mixed up the definition of ionic compound and metals. It is a giant molecule of oppositely charged ions. It cannot be a molecule if it has ions. It is a simple molecule of oppositely charged ions. If it is a simple molecule, that means it's a covalent compound. Why would have why would it have oppositely charged ions? So the correct option for this question is option A. Question seven. Calcium metal reacts with water to form a solution of calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Which equation is correct? So calcium metal reacts with water. So that would be calcium metal being CA solid reacting with water. So since it reacts with water, two moles of water would be required because the product form would be calcium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide has a formula of CaOH twice. So we need two moles of OH negative ions which will only come from two moles of water. So this would be aqueous and we would have hydrogen gas being given off since a metal reacts with water to give off hydrogen gas. So the correct equation for this question is given in option C, making C the correct option for this question. Question eight, 25 cm cube of 0 0.1 mole per dm cube equals sodium hydroxide is neutralized by 24.6 centimeter cube of dilute sulfuric acid. What is the concentration of the dilute sulfuric acid? So the equation for this reaction would be H2SO4 reacting with two moles of NaOH, giving you Na2SO4 plus 2H2O. So the molar ratio of this reaction is 1 is to 2. So the number of moles of NaOH would be 0 0.1 moles in 1000. How many moles in 25 cm cube? So this would be 25 upon 1000 into 0 0.1. So this will give us a value of 2.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 moles. Now, moles of H2SO4 will be equal to half into 2.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3, which will give us a value of 1.25 into 10 to the power of minus 3 moles. So now we have moles of acid and we have been given the volume of acid as well. So 1.25 into 10 to the power of minus 3 moles are present in 24.6 centimeter cube. And since we need to find out the concentration, so we need to find out the number of moles in 1000 cm cube of the solution, which would be calculated as 1000 divided by 24.6 multiplied by 1.25 into 10 to the power of minus 3. And this will give us a value of 0 0.0508 mole per dm cube, making option A the correct option for this question. Question 9. 
the diagram shows the electrolysis of an aqueous solution of X using inert electrodes. So hydrogen is produced at the cathode and chlorine is produced at the anode. What is X? So if concentrated copper to chloride is used, then we would have copper being produced at the cathode and chlorine being produced at the anode. So this is incorrect. Next, we have considered hydrochloric acid with hydrogen being produced at the cathode and chlorine being produced at the anode. This is correct. For dilute hydrochloric acid, we would have hydrogen being produced at the cathode and oxygen being produced at the anode. And for dilute sodium chloride solution, we would have hydrogen being produced at the cathode and oxygen being produced at the anode. So the correct option for this question is option B. Question 10. Aluminum is extracted by electrolysis as shown. Which row shows the ionic half equation at the cathode and the anode? So at the cathode, we have production of aluminum metal and at the anode, we have production of oxygen gas. So at the cathode, reduction takes place. That means electrons will be on the reactant side and not on the product side, eliminating options A and B. Option C has three moles of electrons being added to Al3 positive ions, producing Al. And option D also has the exact same equation. So both these equations are correct for the extraction of aluminum. Now for oxygen, we need two moles of oxide ions to form oxygen gas and remove four moles of electrons since anode is where oxidation occurs. So electrons are removed. So this eliminates option D because option D shows reduction. And this makes option C the correct option for this question.